Yeah, I did it, boys. I uh, I bought a car. <laughs> Changed my plans. This thing is it, it's nice for what I paid for it. How many miles are on it? This is nice. I'll d talk more once I get moving, but right now I got to start driving. I got a six-hour drive home. I've just driven for several hours because I uh, did not want to talk because there was so much traffic and. Connecticut drivers are worse than Jersey drivers. No, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I've been driving this for a while now. I'm getting really good gas mileage. I don't. I haven't even told you what it is. So I flew to Connecticut to get the dream car. I changed my dream car because GTRs are not within my grasp. And the more I thought about it, I don't really want a GTR. I wanted something that was fast when I wanted to be comfortable when I want it to be and I wanted it to be rare and stick out and this checks all the boxes for me and boom here we are back in the garage here I thought I was gonna go film this epic video of me flying to go get my dream car when I got there it was like a, a rinky dink dealership and we didn't see eye to eye on some stuff, and it didn't really go that well, but it did, but I ended up with the car, and then I ended up just driving it easy the whole way home through some of the worst storms I've ever driven through. So, the really, it wasn't very cinematic. I didn't get hard, I didn't stop, I just wanted to drive home. I got home at 10.30 at night, I just drove straight home, and I actually got really good gas mileage. I got 29 miles a gallon. That was surprising. My plan for this year was to get a Nissan GTR. That was, I had it in my head. It was going to happen. Whether it be at the auction, whether it be already rebuilt. The more I looked into it, it was like, you might as well get one that's already rebuilt. Because the auction prices, they're selling for like, really bad ones are selling for like high 20s, 30s. Ones that are fixable are going for 40s. Till you fix it. You have fifty to sixty thousand dollars in an R title vehicle that's worth fifty to sixty thousand dollars. I'm not about that. So then you look into it and you can buy rebuilt ones that are already done for some of them forties, fifties, that they're rare. Forties and fifties. Most of them are sixty thousand dollars. And that's for a two thousand and nine with known transmission problems. And I'm just like, do I really really need a GTR and then I was like there's so many other things for the money that I could buy I looked around at some cars and stuff and then I, I seen one of these and I was like looking at prices for 30s to 40s I was like that's actually that's actually doable like right now found an R title one and that kid was was sketchy it just that would it was weird it was a weird deal so that didn't happen he wanted to sell it but he didn't want to sell it he didn't want to sh show it to me unless i had cash on hand and i'm like no uh -uh. no that's that's how you lose your life i'm not i'm not carrying that much money with me to go look look at a car he was actually gonna show it to me and then an hour after that he raised the price of it online what okay I just messaged him back and said, I'm not interested. Dealership had one called, it was gone. They had another one that was eight grand more than that other one. They were trying to talk me into it. And I was like, no, that's, that's out of my price range. Not not willing to do that. So then I looked in a, at a further range in a Connecticut. I found one. Best looking one I found. Best color with aftermarket goodies for like six grand less than everybody else. With like 10,000 less miles than everybody else. I'm like, that's it. Called the dealership. They gave me an out-the-door price right on the phone. I'm like, all right, this dealership wants to do business. So I put money down. I flew there. And I drove it home. They told me everything was good. We'll get into that. Not every, Everything's not good, but it is. It's very good. Very good.
V view. What is this? Sport Plus is where it's at. There's traffic coming. Normal mode, we just drive normal. I forgot to put it in manual mode. I wanted to put it in manual mode. There we go. Then it's quiet. It's loud, but then it's quiet. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> Gauges change with every mode. Eco mode brings you up an eco gauge, which shows you how economic you're being. It, it'll shift earlier and it tries to keep you in higher gear so you get better gas mileage. This thing has plenty of power. It doesn't matter what gear you're in, it, it has enough power to accelerate, so it's, it's pretty good. When I say this thing has plenty of power, it's fast. But there are lots of cars out there that are faster than this, and I know that. And for me, I don't need the fastest car out there. Yes, a GTR would probably smoke this thing. I don't know stock for stock if they would, like a 2009 for to this. Uh, it, it probably would still, because of the all-wheel drive and stuff. This is a heavy car. This is faster than a lot of cars, but there are still a lot of cars faster than it. I'll just put that out there. I know what it is, and I'm not out to say it's faster than, you know, somebody's hopped up 5.0 Mustang. I don't know. I, I don't know if that would be close or not. I have no clue. What led me to this was I drove my wife's car for several days, okay? And I was like, you know, this is easy to live with and it's nice. It rides nice. If you want to rip it, you could rip it. It handles good. Everything about it. And I was like, this is easy to live with. So I figured this would be the same way. I can tell you that this and the LC are two different cars. This is faster, but but I think the transmission in the LC is better. This is an eight speed, the LC is a 10 speed. The 10 speed racks off shifts quicker than this eight speed does. This eight speed's quick, don't get me wrong, but the 10 speed is quicker. And uh, I think that's the only reason this is faster to 60. It can get zero to 60 in second gear. Where the LC, I think it has to shift to third or fourth. I can't remember exactly. I just know that it takes more shifts to get to 60, so there's a delay there that you lose time. 463 horsepower, I think it is. Torque numbers are a little lower. It's like 390, I don't remember exactly. I think it's 390-ish, um, but it's still, respectable numbers out of a naturally aspirated 5 liter V8. Uh, it, it sounds good, it revs to the moon, and it sounds good doing it. This thing will bounce off the rev limiter all day long. It's a Toyota engine, it, it'll take it. <laughs> 58,000 miles, I am not scared of that mileage on this thing at all whatsoever. I was looking at a bunch of other ones <clears throat> and Comparable to the price I got this for, I was looking, basically what I would have been getting was a 70, 80,000 mile RCF with stock wheels, with um, no carbon fiber hood, none of the extras. Um, I, I wanted the red interior. I, I do really like the red interior, but this wasn't a deal breaker. It's all black, It all black's fine, okay? It has uh, the heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. The ventilated seats I'm not very impressed with. You don't even feel them. I have mine running right now and I can hear the fan running. I don't feel it at all. Now in my entire drive home, I drove it home in eco mode, okay? And it returned me 
up to 29.6 miles to the gallon. When I got home, I was averaging 29. <clears throat> not, not bad at all. That's actually better than the Z. And that's on the highway. The, the best I can get with the Z, I think, was 28. And that was, like, light pedal in it. This was... Well, actually, I drove it halfway home in eco mode. The other half I drove in normal, and it didn't really change my gas mileage. The cool thing about this engine is it is not only direct injection, it's also port injection. So you don't have the ill effects of just having direct injection. So your the intake doesn't get all gummed up. And then on top of that, this engine can run in Atkinson cycle, which makes it more efficient. So it gets better gas mileage. And that's why I returned that kind of gas mileage on the way home. You can get upwards of 30. Uh, if you're driving at a lower speed, I'm driving 75 probably the whole way home, right around there, most of the way. Uh, but yeah, you can probably easily get 30 miles of the gallon out of this, which is just as good as some four cylinders, which is crazy. I got this thing for 39,000. Now, yes, that's still a lot of money, but I'm getting a sports car that's rare in one of the rarest colors they make of it with a bunch of aftermarket goodies that I was would have wanted to do myself. So it's a lot of money that I'm not gonna have to put into the car that I wanted. I was just like, this thing's done right. I don't know that I'll change anything about this. One, okay, I will change one thing about this, the stock infotainment system. They do have a small Rockford Fosgate sub in the trunk, which is just enough to fill the base that these speakers don't. It's nothing crazy. I'm gonna guess it might be pushing 150 watts, maybe. I don't know. It's 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 minimal. Yeah, like I couldn't I could not complain. I, I looked at so many other cards now. I looked at like the new Z, I looked at the new Supras. I think they're probably faster than this, it, not by much, but I think that they probably are faster than this car, but they're also more money than what I paid for this. A lot more. I'm getting Lexus reliability. Could not get a GTR for the price that I got this. There's no way, no how. The only thing I could have got for that price would have been a wrecked GTR that I would have had to fix up and put more money into. So, and and it would have been an older 2009, 2010, 11, that year range with known transmission problems. And I just, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself spending that kind of money for a, a car that I know has reliability issues and that I'm going to have to work on. I knew that if I got this thing, I could drive it home, no issues, no problems, and that's exactly what I did. But the first thing I noticed when I got in this thing, well, first off, me and the dealership, they told me all the tires were good, and then they sent me videos, and I said, is that the stock exhaust? And they said, yeah, my techs uh, looked it over, they said that's the stock exhaust. That turned out to be a lie. <laughs> first thing I noticed was the muff like the tips and I looked at them I'm like those aren't stock exhaust tips so I stuck my head down underneath to find that the mufflers are not there <laughs> it's a straight pipe so this has a muffler delete at least that I can see I don't think it has more than that because although it's loud it's not overbearing like right now it's it's tame you know what I mean it sounds great but when I get on it, it sounds really good. Second thing, I started sticking my fingers in the tread of the tires to see how deep they were. Front ones, great. Back ones, the wear indicators are level with the tread. That's that little bar in between the tread depth that goes around the tire. There's little bars in there. When it's down to that, that means they need replaced. So we went toe-to-toe -to -toe on that one. They wanted me to sign off their inspection paperwork that said the tires were good, which is a sticker on the windshield that has good, fair, and poor for tires, and tires have good. That was a lie. When they handed me the inspection sheet to sign, I pushed it off to the side. 
and I signed all the other papers. And then the, the lady was like, is there a problem with the inspection sheet? And I said, yes. I said, those rear tires need replaced on that car. And I said, I know I'm gonna drive home through storms. And I said, they're not gonna be that great. So she's like, well, we'll have a couple guys go out and look at it. So a couple guys went out and looked at them and I went out with them. And he says, what's wrong with these tires? And I was like, they're down to the wear indicators. They need replaced. So he goes, well, in Connecticut, those are still legal. And I was like, well, in Pennsylvania, those are not. So they're ending up, they're gonna send me a $500 check with the title so that I can buy rear tires for this. Now, will $500 buy two Michelin Pilot Sports? No, it'll come close, but no. So that, plus the out the door price, they knocked some money off of that before I even showed up. So I was like, they were in the ballpark, they were in the right price range for me to go buy this. They told me it was pristine. I got here, it's not pristine, okay? It's good for 58,000 miles. It's good, but it could have been better, but I'm not gonna complain about dings and stuff like that being that it has so many miles on it. And it's, you know, it's a 2015, it's nine years old. I know there's gonna be imperfections on it. Uh, some of the carbon fibers delaminating, not bad yet, but it's starting to, it's a given. Carbon fiber, that just happens. But I just wanted a nice car. And the first thing I did was when I got in it to leave, I'm like, oh, this thing, is stiff. It feels like it is going to be a very stiff ride. If you've ever rode in a car with coilovers, you know that feeling. That's what it felt like. So I pulled out of there. First bump I hit, it was very compliant. Didn't didn't really feel it. I was like, oh, well this is this is decent. So it feels. I, I don't know how to explain the suspension. It feels like it would be very harsh, and it never was the whole way home. It didn't matter the bump I hit. It it is compliant with every bump. It, it takes it and you don't really get jolted inside here. It, it's, it's still comfortable. These seats really hug you. I'm not going anywhere. They're not as comfortable as the LC500, but they're comfortable. And after this drive home, it took me seven hours to get home. After that seven hour drive home, I, I, and knowing that it needs tires and I don't have an inspection sticker. I got a temporary plate, stuff like that. I just decided the Murano is gonna be the smart choice to take on vacation. So yes, I'm not gonna take this to Tennessee. Uh, it's gonna sit at home. We're gonna take the Murano. It's, it's fine. That's why I serviced that thing and just in case. And this is that case. So although I do really love this car and I would like to drive it down there, this is not the place I wanna sit for another seven or eight hours straight. Now I did, encounter two problems on the way home non deal breakers but i got two warning lights they have since cleared themselves uh one was for the pre-collision system so the sensor in the front that detects if you're gonna be like if you're gonna hit somebody then it slams the brakes on so that shut off right after it rained the first time and then my cruise control quit working shortly after that um, and told me that I needed to clean the rain sensor. The rain sensor's up here by the mirror. Uh, my automatic sensing wipers were still working correctly, but it would not let me turn cruise control on because it told me I needed to clean the rain sensor. But now, if I put it on cruise, it goes on just fine and it works good. This has radar for cruise control also. I do like that as well. I don't know if that was just a fluke and that, that was halfway into my drive. So that was after three or four hours of driving, plus it rained. So might be the thing with the rain, not sure yet. I don't like eco mode. I like normal mode. I like to see my tack. In eco mode, you can't see your tack. I know there's a couple things on the bottom side that I need to address. Uh, the inner fender on the front, passenger side, the side skirts. I know there's a couple bolts or hardware missing out of that because I can feel where it's loose. Uh, so there's a couple areas there I want to address. That's really it. do 
want to look at the underside of this thing because obviously I cannot see under this car because it sits so low. So, not in this video, but I'm eventually going to get this thing on the lift so we can take a look at it. But I, I'm happy with this thing. I'll be happy with it for a while. <laughs> so, this is sticking around. The Z is going to stick around for a while, but I think it is going to sell. I'm broken on whether to sell it or not, but I have a friend that's been wanting it, and having this around, I can't see the sense of having it too, but we'll see. I, I still haven't told him I'm going to sell it yet. I just said I've thought about it. So here it is guys, this is my 2015 Lexus RCF. Call it my midlife crisis, I don't care. I wanted to get something nice. And I mean, my cars are nice and stuff, but I wanted something flashy for once, okay? And I wanted something that had some power. But I don't wanna just, like, I, I don't wanna beat the crap out of this car either. So basically, I bought this car for me. I liked everything about it. I liked all the carbon fiber. I like the wheels. I like the way it sits. I like the seats. I like the different modes. The stereo, we're gonna make it better. But this is it. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for content because there will be content with this car, no doubt. Um, but my feeling is <clears throat> the Z needs to go and I need another beater in the fleet. So we'll talk about that later. But yeah, if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom locks up whenever I touch her. And we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped. Almost talked daddy into taking the RCF to, to Gatlinburg because the Murano battery was dead just a minute ago when I went out. It's on the charger now. Do you want to go? Hmm? Hi. Hi. You're not going to miss me that much, are you? No. It's do, man. You got your own chair. How do you like this chair? Yeah? He's accustomed to us leaving. He likes Grandma. Huh. Grandma will come up and feed you. What are you doing, Ornery? Hmm? Don't be throwing no parties or anything while we're gone. Okay. Bye-bye.